seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Stop. This is a model rocket. And this is me. Before we launch this high-tech revolutionary model rocket, we first need to understand how rockets work. Before the rocket launches, it is loaded with fuel. During the launch, this fuel is burnt in a combustion reaction, which is the same reaction that happens when having a fire, but on a much bigger scale. But burning anything also requires oxygen, one of the main elements in the fire triangle, which is fine on Earth where air is all around us, but not so great in space where air is, well, nowhere. Oh, and there's no sound in space either. Very awkward. Very awkward. So, what do rockets do? They take their oxygen with them. As well as the fuel, rockets are also filled with an oxidizer substance, which contains this oxygen and is often just a liquid form of oxygen stored below a whopping minus 183 degrees Celsius. The reaction between the fuel and oxidizer produces a lot of hot gas, which is then thrust out the bottom of the rocket. As a force is exerted on it by the rocket, Newton's third law tells us that therefore, the hot gas also exerts an equal force on the rocket in the opposite direction. If you imagine this trolley that I'm sitting on, it's the rocket, and this rather heavy log is the hot gas being pushed out. As I exert that force on the log, the trolley at the same time starts moving in the opposite direction because another force with an equal size but in the opposite direction is also exerted on, on the trolley by the log a textbook example of Newton's third law. Once this force is greater than the weight of the rocket, it accelerates upwards because there is a resultant force and starts its journey. As the rocket speeds up and gets higher and higher, the chemical energy stored in the fuel is converted to kinetic energy, the energy that a moving object has, and gravitational potential energy, the energy that an object above the ground has, as well as thermal and plenty of sound energy. However, as the rocket accelerates upwards, the air particles in the atmosphere hit the outside of the rocket and exert a force on it. As the rocket speed increases, these air particles collide with the rocket more frequently and so exert a greater force on it. For instance, if I stick my hand out of the car on the motorway, I can feel the air pushing against my hand. And if the car accelerates, I can air exert an even greater force on my hand because the air particles collide more but as the rocket gets higher and higher, the number of air particles in a given volume of space, i.e. the density, decreases until it reaches space where there is no air. As the density decreases, the force exerted by the air also decreases because the air particles collide less frequently with the rocket. Therefore, there comes a point around the middle of the launch when the rocket has the maximum amount of force exerted on it by the air particles, known as the point of maximum dynamic pressure. This is one of the most dangerous moments of the launch. If things don't go to plan, the rocket could break apart. To prevent this, the rocket engines are throttled down during this point, and the rockets themselves have a highly streamlined body, which is what gives them their iconic shape to reduce the air resistance. If a rocket passes through this point, nothing spectacular happens. It's probably a good thing. Once the rocket reaches the start of space, Often its fuel tank has emptied, and so it's just dead weight. So, what do rockets do? They separate it away from the rocket. Why do they do this? To reduce the weight of the rocket, to improve its efficiency, because less weight means less thrust force is needed to put the rocket into orbit. Often a second engine may kick in to keep the rocket accelerating. Once the rocket has reached space, the rocket engines cut off and it enters an orbit around Earth. In other words, it circles the planet. But why doesn't it fall back down to Earth? Take this ball here. If I drop it, it falls towards the ground because its weight pulls it towards the Earth. If instead I throw the ball, it makes some initial speed. It travels further away from me before landing than when I just dropped it. Now, 
Imagine me standing on a high tower 200 miles above the surface of the Earth, at the same height as the International Space Station, as to get away from the atmosphere. If I were able to throw this ball fast enough, it would travel around the entire Earth until it returned to where it started, and probably hit me in the head. With no air resistance to slow it down, the ball would keep moving around the Earth at the same height and never land, even though it is constantly falling towards the Earth, because it is moving sideways fast enough and so effectively falls around the Earth, and so enters an orbit. All objects in orbit travel at a colossal speed. The International Space Station, for instance, travels at around 17,500 miles per hour. For comparison, the average bullet travels at around only 1,800 miles per hour, almost 10 times slower. Once the rocket has entered orbit, it uses small thrusters to guide it towards the space station before eventually docking. Since the rocket and station are travelling at almost the same speed as each other, the docking process is very smooth. Slightly odd, given that they're travelling at almost 10 times faster than a bullet. Once the crew is ready to return home, the landing module is released from the space station and fires its engines, which, according to Newton's third law, exerts an equal force in the opposite direction to the motion of the module, causing it to slow down. For instance, if I want to slow down the moving trolley, I throw out the log in the same direction I'm moving. As I exert a force on the log, the log also exerts an equal force on me and the trolley in the opposite direction, causing us to slow down. As the module slows down, it starts to fall back to Earth. As it enters the atmosphere, it travels so fast that the friction between the module and the air particles creates an immense amount of heat and engulfs the module in burning hot plasma basically an extreme version of a carpet burn. To protect the crew, the engineers surround the module with a highly heat-resistant material to stop the astronauts disintegrating into a, well, mess. Fortunately, the friction from the atmosphere is very good at slowing down the module, and once it slows down and the burning stops, the parachute is deployed to further slow it down. Just before the module touches down, rockets are fired in the same direction to the module's travel, causing it to slow down to a complete stop. So, after all this, we decided to make one ourselves. But only a model one. Remember, if you enjoy this video, be sure to like, subscribe and press that notification bell, as well as check out our other videos and practice your knowledge with our custom-made worksheets at worksexample.xyz. Thank you for watching, and most importantly, stay safe.